What up guys, Joachim here, aka Joachim Justin Morgan, aka Joachim the Convert. And I hope you all are having a very Merry Christmas. Um, Christ is born, glorify him. So I got a really interesting comment on a video and it was talking about how uh, the Orthodox Church continues to run towards heresy. And this was coming from a Catholic person. And that was a very interesting um, comment to come from a Catholic person. As many of you know, I, I teach at a Catholic school. And uh, I had to stop and think about what this person was talking about because, um, you know, if you really study the Orthodox Church and what we teach, we have not deviated um, really in any theological area in, in really since the beginning of the church. Um, the, we hold still to the apostolic faith. Uh, the, the ecumenical councils have occurred, and those clarified what we taught, as in they weeded out or cut off uh, from the church or practices or things that were not acceptable. Uh, so they didn't really add to the theology of the church, but they, they cut out those things that, that, um, that we did not accept, and they may have revealed uh, things about the teachings of the church. Um, obviously, like major ones would be the, the Trinity, that, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, that Christ is in two natures. Uh, God is a hundred, Christ is 100% man and 100% God. Um, they might have clarified some of the feasts that we celebrate. We celebrate 12 great feasts plus uh, Pascha or, or Easter as we call it in English. Uh, the, the feast of all feasts. Um, the ecumenical councils uh, weeded out the, the divinity of Christ, that, that Christ is not just a, a human Messiah, that Mary was not just Christotokos, but she is Theotokos. She is the bearer of God himself. She is the mother of God. So th those are things that uh, were revealed through the ecumenical councils. And uh, so, you know, the church has, of the Orthodox Church practically, or in, in practice, has maintained uh, the same traditions since the very early centuries of the church. When you read the Didache and other very ancient documents that detail how Christians worship, that how Christians uh, believed, how they practiced, what their, their lives looked like, how they approached worship, how they fasted, how they prayed, uh, we pretty much, for the most part, uh, have deviated very little from those practices. Um, so when a Catholic person comes to my channel and tells me that uh, Orthodox continue to run headlong towards heresy, I have to pause to think about what does this person mean? What are they talking about? And when I look at the Catholic Church today and I see Pope Francis praying towards Mecca with uh, Muslim imams, even though the um, ecumenical councils of the church tell us that we cannot pray with heretics, that we cannot uh, worship alongside uh, schismatics the you know and and pope francis knowingly and openly uh practices and endorses that type of thing um and he's the head of their church whatever he says he's the pope they've deemed him according to vatican one to be infallible whoever the pope is um uh, you know some some catholics make these uh weird kind of um distinctions about if the pope is sitting on a seat versus not in the seat um Whatever, the Vatican I, I don't know that it made that distinction exactly like that, though. So um, they're continuing to change their theology, continuing to modify. Um, but if, if your belief is that Pope Francis is infallible and whatever he changes about your theology or updates and makes new um, and changes the church to make apologetics for or apologies, for whatever uh, the church, the, the Catholic Church has done in the past, we, we're not making those apologies. That's not going on in the Orthodox Church. We have maintained the faith, and if uh, you, you're not following it, and we've cut you off from our church, uh, sorry, you know, repent and return to the church. That's the answer for that. You know, we're not going to Canada or to any other country and making apologies about telling people that they have to repent and follow Christ. That That is the way. That is the only way. There is no way Christ came to earth. He established his church. The church is his body. So if, if you're trying to follow Christ outside of the church, the church is his body. It, you, you can't uh, say, I'm, I'm of the head, but I, I'm not of the body. So there, there's only one body. There's only one church. 
And uh, if you believe that is the Catholic Church, then that means that you have to embrace these ideas of modernity, uh, modernity, these, these ideas of, of uh, praying with schismatics and heretics, that that's, you know, Pope Francis says that's, that's no longer such a bad thing. He doesn't say it with his mouth, but he says it with his actions because he goes and plays with Muslim imams. He brings in the Pakimama idol into uh, the Vatican, I believe, and they, they pray towards it. They pray with the, the idol. They, they commit this act of idolatry with Amazonian idols. You know, the, the idol, it's not the mother of God. It's not, it's not an idol of the Theotokos. It's not Mary. Uh, see, I have an icon of Mary right here. Uh, that is not, this is not the Pakimama idol. This is the mother of God. You know, the, the Pakimama idol, however, that is not the mother of God. That is, uh, that is an idol. That is an Amazonian idol. So if you're praying towards it and you're bowing down towards it, then you are... The, so Pope Francis, in, in this act of you know, bowing towards the Amazonian idol and praying towards it or whatever, that, that's essentially saying that idolatry is okay. So I, that being said, uh, you know, Bishop Barron, I think he had an interview with Ben Shapiro. And uh, in the interview, he kind of makes these cryptic uh, insinuations that, uh, you know, you can be saved through other religions like Judaism outside of Christ, outside the body of Christ. Uh, so, you know, and, and I think uh, Pope Francis has made similar comments in the past. So if that is your interpretation, that is your idea of what is the true faith, and then you look at Orthodox Christians or the Orthodox Church, who say that we are the true church. We, we teach that we are the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. One, there's only one. There's not two bodies of Christ. There's only one body of Christ. One holy, that we are holy. Not, not that I myself am holy, but the church is holy. The church, through the ecumenical councils, through the working of the Holy Spirit, maintains the spark, the, the true holiness of the church one holy Catholic, that the fullness of the church, we are not lacking in anything. The fullness of the church exists in the Orthodox Church. One holy Catholic and apostolic, that we originated with the, apostle, the apostles and that we continue that succession until today without deviating or without modernizing or without creating new schismatic theologies or, or any other thing. We, we, we don't look back to the church of the first millennia and say, well, we no longer believe this, or, or we've changed our, our practices, we've changed our theology since then, and now, now we have this different thing. If that's your interpretation of what is true and what is accurate and what is faithful to the church, and then you look at something like the Orthodox Church that, that has this uh, continuity uh, to it, both not, not just in the fact that we have the same Pope or we have a succession, but that we hold to the faith and we have the the bishops which stem from the apostles all of these things working together that we maintain the true faith um, if you look at us that I could see where you would look at our church and say yes they are heretics it, it reminds me of uh, in the, the um, writings of the desert fathers the <coughs> there is a passage where they are speaking with uh, Abba Anthony and I can't remember if it's Alba Anthony or if it's a different uh, of the De Desert Fathers, but it's in the section, the first section, which is on Alba Anthony. And there's a section that talks about the um, uh, the mad, those who are mad, that there will be a day, there will be a day that will come when those who are mad will look at uh, the church, will look at people within the church, the faithful, and they will say, you are not like me, you are mad. And so, you know, I think that that is, in my opinion, and in, in my interpretation, that's what this person is doing. When they, they say that the Orthodox are running towards heresy, that, that is essentially what they are doing, is that they are looking at those who are faithful, those who main, maintain the apostolic faith of the first millennia. And they look at us, and we are so different than them, because they are perfectly fine praying with heretics and schismatics. They are perfectly fine praying towards idols. They are perfectly fine embracing other faiths as, as alternative ways to Christ. And they, they, they think that's fine, that's okay, that is good, that is Catholic. And then they look at the Orthodox faith, which accepts none of that, none of that at all. There is only one way to, that we know of, that we know that has been revealed through the church. That is that you are repent of your sins, that you are baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, that you are embraced by the church and that you begin to walk in faith with Christ, that you are worshiping Christ alone, that you believe that God is, um, 
I, did you believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church? Did you, um, you believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of all things heaven and earth, and of one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten, that you accept the, the virgin uh, birth, that you accept that Jesus Christ lived as a man, that he was crucified and died and rose again for the remission of our sins, that you must repent of those sins you have to accept all these things, that you accept the body and blood of Christ when you accept the Eucharist at church. You must become part of the church. You must uh, begin the cycle of prayers. That you know, All of these things go towards your salvation. They lead towards health, holiness. And uh, this is how we are saved, through the interaction with Christ, through becoming like Christ, through prayer, through worship, through the sacraments of the church, through all, all of these things combined. Um, so I will kind of leave it at that, but uh, that would represent, in my opinion, as an Orthodox Christian, that would represent two very um, distinct ways of looking at heresy. If you are a modernist Catholic, of course there are many Catholics who would agree with the Orthodox Church. Um, you know, they would be more like the old Catholics. Uh, they're, they're very much like the Orthodox Church. They, they would not accept uh, Vatican I, probably. They would not accept the, the extreme deviations that occurred in the faith of the first millennia between um, the first millennia and Vatican I, uh, which established many alternate, alternative, uh, you know, things outside of what the Church had traditionally taught. Uh, they most certainly would not accept Vatican II, which are, are far more extreme deviations uh, from the practices and teachings of the Church. And they would probably look at the Orthodox Church and agree that this is the faith that they were taught. This is the faith that was passed down through tradition, through, through the Church, um, not, not accepting modernism, not accepting um, any, any kind of new theologies, new teachings, and new things. Um, and, and those people, I, I hope that uh, either that they, before or after the judgment, that they, they become part of the Orthodox Church. I don't know how it'll work with the, the judgment. Christ didn't come down and uh, ask me about, about that. So, you know, I, I, I hope that those people at the judgment will um, be said that, you know, enter in like good and faithful servant. You've maintained the Orthodox faith. Um, Protestants too, I, I don't know. But I know many people that um, have very similar views that uh, sound very orthodox when they speak, but maybe they're not part of the Orthodox Church. Maybe the Orthodox Church isn't available to them, so I don't know. I know there's some distinctions between what I said before and what I'm saying now with those who are at the judgment and they didn't have access to the church, but uh, there are some gray areas that we don't see there. There are people throughout history who have not had access to the church, and I don't know how the judgment will look for them, but I, I know that Christ is merciful and that he will give people opportunity for repentance, so you know, hopefully that uh, is the case for them and they do choose to repent and follow Christ in the judgment. Um, yeah, I don't know how that'll work. So you guys take it easy. Hopefully that has been informative. If you come to my channel and you say this is an Orthodox Christian and they seem very different from us, therefore they must be heretics, um, maybe do some research about what it means to be a heretic and what exactly uh, the Orthodox Church teaches and practices, because I have a feeling maybe this person actually has no idea. And um, yeah, so you guys take it easy. I'll talk to you soon.